yesterday when we expanded the whole thing out that you would have to do each one and it takes a little bit of time, but you get to expand every term, correct? But then I told you on the test, usually it's not like they don't ask you to expand the whole thing last for a specific term. So binomial theorem is actually that. Now the binomial theorem formula is up here, right there, the top of your page. So that's what we're going to use. So we're going to go here, we're going to find the fourth term. So if I use my formula, I need T4. So I write my formula below to help myself out. So I know it's TK plus 1 equals NCK X to the N minus K Y to the K. Now, in order to fill in that formula, I need K, I need N, I need X, I need Y. Do you agree? K, N, X, Y. So, in the formula it says it has to be in the form X, y to, X plus Y to the N. So I know X in this case is actually X, which is kind of nice. Y is actually Y. N is actually 8. What's K? 3. Because I know it needs to be T4, right? This needs to be T4. So K has to be 3, because 3 plus 1 is 4. Do we agree? Now I have all four things I need. How many total terms does this binomial have? It's x plus y to the 8. How many total terms? Yeah. Nine. So it was one more. Because we start at k equals 0 and we go to k equals 8. So k equals 0 to k equals 8 is 9 terms, right? So you always have one more. If you forget about it, think about x plus 2 squared. x plus 2 squared would get you x squared plus 4x plus 4. It would get you 3 terms, right? So if it's x plus 2 squared, it gets you 3 terms. x plus y to the 8 would get you 9 terms. It's just one more. All right? So we're going to fill in the formula. So we're going to go t, 3 plus 1, so that's my k, equals n, which is 8, ck, which is 3, x, which is x in this case, n minus k, 8 minus 3, and then y to the k, which is 3. I'm literally just filling it into the formula. Is that a tag sign? Look what you said about the one more. The oh, and then, yeah. Okay, so we're going to get T4, term 4, equals 8T3. I do not have my mouse. 56. X to the 5. Y to the 3 which there's no numbers to bring up and, mul and multiply the 56 by, so it's just 56 x5, y3. Now I think that's a lot faster personally to find the fourth term than going x plus y times 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 x plus y, foil, 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 distribute, 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 collect like terms a whole bunch of times, then put them in descending power of x, x and then taking the fourth term. That sounds aggressively long. Or is this way faster, right? So for two, it says to find the third term, but what's my problem first with my binomial? It's not in the plus form. Yeah, it's not in the plus form. So I have to go 2x plus negative 5 to the 7. So my x is 2x, my y is negative 5, my n is 7, and what's my k going to be? I'm looking for the third term, and it would be 2. Remember, if you don't remember, go to your formula. I need t3. It's k plus 1, so k would have to be 2, because 2 plus 1 is 3. So you try that one out. So when we go to do the formula, we do t k plus 1 equals n, which is 7, c k, which is 2, x, which is 2x to 
to the 7 minus 2, and then y, which is negative 5, to the 2. Now keep in mind that the 7 minus 2 is actually a 5, and we have to remember to distribute it to both the 2 and the x. So we get t3 equals 21. Then we do 2 to the 5, which is 32, x to the 5. And then we do negative 5 squared, which is 25. If you put negative 5 squared into your calculator without brackets, it will tell you it's negative 25. But any negative raised to an even exponent is positive because it's multiplying it twice. Right? And if you put negative 5 squared into your calculator like this, it thinks it's this, just so you know. You're just squaring the 5. So if you want negative 5 squared, you actually have to put the brackets around the whole negative 5 squared. All right. And we take our numbers and we go 21 times 32 times 25, and we bring them all to the front. And we get T3 equals 16,800x to the 5. The next one wants us to find the middle term. What has to happen in order to get a middle term? Anyone have any ideas? You have to know how many terms there are. Yeah, you have to know how many terms there are, and there needs to be a what number of odd terms? Odd. odd. I just spoke David away. I went up. An odd number of terms. Because if there's an odd number of terms, you'll go this, 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 middle, right? If there's an even number of terms, you go this, 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 this no middle, right? So how can we tell if there's going to be an odd number of terms? What has to happen? The exponent has to be even. The exponent actually has to be even in order to get an odd number of terms because the total number of terms is one more than the exponent. So if this is a 10, we have to add 1, right? So we'll get 11 terms. We agree? So I just can do this if it's easier for you to see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That gives how many terms we have, right? We want the middle term. What term are they looking for? Term 6. The fact we're saying, give me term 6. Okay? So we want term 6. Try it out. We want x, this is our x, this is our y, this is our n. Always check that there's a plus sign in between. If there's not a plus sign in between, you need to make a plus sign in between, correct? Um, do you think they'll make the oopsie one of the answers be if you don't take the minus sign with it? Totally. Okay, what is k going to be if it's term 6? 5. And you'll know you made an oopsie within the first 3 seconds. T, k plus 1. That's T6. Boom. We're good. If it doesn't come out as T6, oops, you did something wrong. <laughs> rechange your rechange your K. I'm going to teach math or, or English 30-1 next year. I'm just going to switch completely to English. My English skills are so awesome that that is where I'm going to go. I don't have nightmares that that's the schedule they give me and then I quit teaching. Oh, I'm recording. All right. So we have 10C5. X is A to the 10 minus 5, and B to the K. Oh, okay. What's 10 C5? Don't all answer at once. 252. Thank you. 252, A to the 5, B to the 5. Even if I want to write fast, my board doesn't let me, so I have to write slowly or it just becomes gibberish. You okay, Anna? I'm doing great. Okay, cool. So those are the things they can do. They can ask you for the fourth term or the sixth term or the middle term, correct? Then the next thing they could do, which is a different option, is they could actually ask you for the term with y to the 5. Okay? My board does what it wants. It's like my children. All right. So, <laughs> just kidding. I have full control of them. My board, I don't have control. Okay, so... We do know that we have an x, we have a y, we have an n, we don't know the k. We agree? That's the only thing we don't know. But we always have an x, a y, and a k. Or x, a y, and an n. So if I put a plus sign and put a minus here, I actually have x, I have y, 
I have N, I need K, but for the time being, I'm just going to put a box where K could exist. All right? So if I don't know my K, they don't give me the exact term, that's fine. I'm going to put a box there. So I'm going to go T box plus 1, that's K plus 1, equals 8 C box x, which is 5, to the 8 minus box, and then negative 2y to the box. So I'm literally just filling in all I can, right? Anyone have an idea what the box could be? If I need a y to the 5? Ultimately, I need a term with y to the exponent 5. Anyone know? Okay. Five. It's just five. Yes. They'll be here all week. Good job. All right. So we put a five here. Well, at least I think he is. I haven't discussed it. I'm assuming. Okay. But five in all the boxes because all the boxes are just K. We agree? So don't let it overwhelm you. Fill in what you do know and then poof, you, have, you can figure out what you don't. Because I know I need a Y to the five, right? The only way I can get a Y to the five is make that a five then that has to be a 5 and a 5 and a 5, because they're all K. So this is term what? 6. six. Then 8C5, I don't want to do it. What is it? 8C5. Someone give me an it. Anyone? Thank you. 56. Then we have 5 cubed, which is 125. Then we have to remember, there are going to be the people in this room who never distribute the exponent to the coefficient in front every single time. And it's the saddest day ever because you think you're right because the answer will be there. So please, if you're that person, star, 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 remember, 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 the 5 has to go to both things. So negative 2 to the 5 is negative 32. Y to the 5. And you multiply 56, 125, and negative 32, and we get negative 224,000. Y to the 5. So that is the term. This is the term. Sometimes it'll ask for the term number that contains Y to the 5. What would the term number be? 6, right? 6 is the term number. If it just says the term, it's just the answer. If it says the term number, it's what the term is, 6. Okay? And in this case, if this was a numeric response, they're probably going to ask for the term number because that is more than four numbers and it's negative. We can't go to numeric response. Okay? Then over. Okay, thinking caps. We'll bring in our thinking caps. You can just grab one and you can just put it on because we're going to need it. I have a few extras. Just Pass it on. Okay, cool. Put your pencils down after, after you're done writing that because you need all the thinking caps. Pencils are even like sidetracking. James, don't be rubbed without it. Thank you. All right. I was going to call you James. I think I'm going to you too. I still like James better. So I might call you James better. Okay. Are we ready? No. Constant term. <laughs> I'm still going. It doesn't matter. Constant term. I don't know why I asked. That was rhetorical. You have to, you're ready anyways. Okay, cool. Constant term. What is a constant term? It remains constant. True. True, true, true. Okay, the same. What is a constant term as well? You give definitions like me, and that's why we can't be teaching English 30-1. I use the word in the definition. The constant is the constant, the one that remains constant. Like that. That's exactly how I roll in English. It's why I don't think nightmares. Anyways, the constant, you know this. It's the number without a letter. Letter. Letter often known as <laughs> variable. <laughs> and it doesn't have a zero, too. It's true. There's no zero. That's, that's a true statement. No, that's good. Um, so the constant term is the term without a variable. It remains constant because when you fill in something for the variables, that one won't change because it doesn't have a variable.
Okay. Digging deep into the grade 10 pits. Go put fence back down. Fence back down. Fence back down. Um, in grade 10, you were taught this. In grade 10, you were taught this. Okay, so when we have x to the negative 3, and you had a negative exponent, it was when you guys thought exponent, you were like, exponent laws, I can add them, I can multiply them, like, this is fine, and then negatives come and everyone crumbles, okay? But you're okay, you made it through, you're three years past, and you're still going. So, if we have a negative exponent, we can drop it to the bottom, and it becomes positive. If we have a negative exponent in our denominator, we can move it to our numerator and it would become positive. That's what you're taught in grade 10. Okay? Do we agree? All right. Fun fact. If you have x cubed down here, we can rewrite it as x to the what up here? Negative 3. True statement. So you can take anything from the bottom and it becomes to the top. Okay, we're going to try this. Ready? Ready? No. Type this into your calculator. So I'll need your pencil. Not a joke. Type in 1 divided by 4. What do you get? 0.25. Cool. Using the same rule of what I just said, how could I rewrite this? 4 to the, this is 4 to the 1 down here, right? If I brought it up, it would be 4 to the what? Negative, Negative 1, we agree. Type it in. Damn. I don't actually know what I'm talking about. See? 4 to the negative 1 is 0.25. Same thing. You can take anything in the denominator and move it up to the numerator by raising it to a negative exponent. Okay, so we can rewrite this as 2x plus, make the negative join that, right? If I want to take this x2, x squared, and I want to bring it up, what would I write it to? x to the negative 2. So I would get negative 1 would still be there, and this is going to join it, so it's going to be x to the negative 2 to the 15. I get like the negative exponent thing. How is like, okay, so x to the negative 3 is eventually because x to the 3 over 1 is x to the 3. Okay. Over 1 is just itself. So like, how, does that, how does that work? Because x to the negative 3 is like 4 to the negative 3 is 1 to the 3. 1 over 4 to the negative 3 is the same as 4 to the 3. It's one over x to the negative three, and then you're just saying that that's the same thing as x to the three over one. Yeah. X to the three over one is just x to the three. But it's over two. <laughs> if you do one over four yeah. to the negative one. That is the exact same yes, yeah. as 4 over 1. Okay, I, I just realized what I'm doing. Right? Okay. <laughs> you were trying to keep them both positive, I think, is what was happening. I just I yeah. the first and the second step, it does the same. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Different example. Got it. Okay. Does everyone understand where I got to here? So I just brought the x up, squared up, and I made the x to the negative 2, and the negative joined the 1. How many terms would this have, possibly? 16, right? So it was 1 more than n. Boy, would that stink to have to do all 16 terms to figure out which one's the constant, one without a variable, correct? What did they not give me here? 
rhymes with K. K. <laughs> yeah, they didn't give me K. Yeah, they didn't give me K. Guys, they didn't give me K. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> rhymes with K and it is K. Okay, so this is X. This is Y. This is N. The only thing we don't know is K. True statement. What could I do? Yeah, you can write everything you know. So we could go like T blank plus 1 equals 15 T blank x, which is 2x, to the 15 minus blank, and then negative 1, x to the negative 2, to the blank. Now we could figure it out that way, or instead of putting blanks, we could literally write k. We could do just a k. We could do 2 t k plus 1, which is term 3, and then 15 t k, and you have to solve it that way. Um, and do it that way where you figure out where it kept crosses off because you're going to have your X's cancel. So, I'll show you what it is. So, you can put a K here. Ooh, that's a check mark there. I'm going to put a K here, and then a K here, and then a K here, and then a K here. Nope. Yep. That's the X from up there. A K here. All right. I want the, the exponents to cancel. I want the variables to cancel off. Correct? So I have technically over here, I'm just going to go over here and say I have x to the 15 minus k. And I have x to the negative 2k. Actually, they're multiplied. I don't know why I have a book. They're multiplied, right? And I need them to get them to cancel off. True statement because constant means no variables. What do you do when you multiply two x's? Multiply two bases that are the same. What do you do with the exponents? For example, x to the 3, yeah, times x to the 5 is x to the 8. You add exponents when they're the same base, correct? So we are going to get x to the 15 minus k plus negative 2k. What's going to have to happen? I'm going to need to get it to cancel, right? So what do I need it to get to be? What's the only way it will cancel? If it's a 1... If this is equal to 1, does it cancel? Yes. x to the 1? What's x to the 1? 1. What's x to the 2? x to the 2. What's x to the negative 2? Negative 2. What does this have to be? A 0, right? It needs to be a 0. If this is x to the 0, that cancels off. Because anything to the power of 0 is 1. We agree? So we just take 15 minus k minus 2k, and it has to equal 0. So then we get 15 minus 3k equals 0, and then negative 3k equals negative 15. So k has to equal what? 5. So you can do it that way. I'm going to give you another option. And then we'll just solve it out with k being 5, correct? You can do it that way. Or we can do it the box option. And I'll show you what I mean. So we can go T box minus 1 plus 1. That's just here. And then 15 box. This is a minus a box. And this is a box. And you could technically do guess and check until you get them to be the same. Because if I have X to the, let's say, 10... And it's multiplied by x to the negative 10. What do I get? x to the what? 0, because you add exponents. And then it cancels off. Correct? 
When you have two exponents, one's positive, one's negative, it cancels off from zero because you add exponents when you have the same base. So we need to get these two x's to be the exact same so they cancel off. So you can do it by trial and error. You could go, technically, I'm going to pretend it's a 1. Don't do this, we're just paying attention. So if it's a 1, this is going to be x to the 14. It's going to be x to the negative 2. Does that cancel off? That would be x to the 13. Are we any better? No. So I could try 2. This would be x to the 13. This would be x to the negative 4. 13 plus negative 4 is actually 9. So does it cancel? No. So I can try the 3. So this will be x to the 12. This will be x to the negative 6. Did they cancel? No, that results in x to the 6. So I can try a 4. This will be x to the 11. This will be x to the negative 8, which results in x cubed. Did they cancel? No. So then I can try 5. This is x to the 10. This is x to the negative 10. What happened? They canceled. So k is 5. So you can do it algebraically like this, where you set the exponents equal to each other, or add the exponents, sorry, and set it equal to 0 and solve. Or you can guess and check till it balances and they cancel off. Okay? Either way, it's 5. So I'm going to put a 5 in here, 5 in here, 5 in here, 5 in here. It's asking for the constant term, so we need the actual answer. So it, your answer should be just a number. If it asks for the constant term number, what would it be? 6, right? It would be term 6. Remember, this has to be 2 to the 10 as well. You have to distribute it through. And the negative 5 has to go to both. This is negative 1. You got a separate sheet of paper out because I'm going to give you the constant term question from that would be technically your homework, but I'm giving it to you right now so you can practice it. You got a piece of paper? If you don't have an extra piece of paper, there's paper up in that top right. In that little line thing, and the paper just right there. We're going to come back to these notes, so save them still. But I'm just making you practice one right away. So I would rewrite it as x squared plus negative 2, and then this is x to the 1, so when it moves up, it's going to be x to the negative 1, to the 12. I'm going to do it with the k's, but if you do it with the box, it's totally fine. So I'm going to go t k plus 1 equals uh, 12 c k, x squared to the 12 minus k, and then negative 2 x to the negative 1 to the k. Now I know that these two need to be multiplied together to get your thing. So we're going to have, um, if we want to, we could go 12 c k x to the 
24 minus 2k, right? And then negative 2 x to the negative k. Now these two are going to be added and they have to equal what? They have to be added and they're going to equal what? 0. So we can go 24 minus 2k plus negative k has to equal 0. 24 minus 3k has to equal 0. 24 equals 3k divided by 3 k equals 8. And then I try it out. So I go t8 plus 1 equals 12c8 x to the 24 minus 2 times 8 and then minus 2x to the negative 8. Sorry, that's on your X. Uh, this one should be here. Negative 8. Negative. I don't like being with this thing. Uh, this would be a negative 8 here, but it'll still be an 8 out there. And you can do it that way. This is the way that I've always done it. So T box plus 1 equals 12C box x, was it squared? So 12 minus box. Negative 2x to the negative 1 to the box. And then I just say this. I say, okay, I need to get my x's to match. We agree? And you can go through just a process. I start at 1, then I go to 2, then I go to 3, then I go to 4, then I go to 5 till they match and they can't go off. Okay? So if I try a 1, I now have 2 times 11, which is 22, and this is negative 1. Do they match? Then I try 2. 2 times 10 is 20, and then negative 2. Does that cancel? 20 and negative 2 gets me 18. X to the 18, so not cancel. Then I try 3. So I get 2 times 9, which is 18, negative 3. No. Four. So this is eight. Two times eight is sixteen. And negative four. No. Try a five. This is seven. Two times seven is fourteen. Negative five. No. Try a six. Two times six. Twelve. Negative six. No. Try a seven. 2 times 5 is 10, negative 7. No, we're getting closer, but still not there. Try an 8. 2 times um, 12 minus 8 is 4. That's 8 and negative 8. So did that work? Do they cancel? Yeah. So I just put an 8 in here, and then I just do my math like normal. So I get T9 equals, and I do the boxes every time because it's way less confusing. Faster? Not so much. Less confusing? Absolutely. This is to the 4. So I get x to the 8. Then negative 2 to the 8. This positive 256. x to the negative 8. And then those cancel. That's just 495 times 256. Okay, I want you to go, we're going to come back to the notes in a second, but now I want you to go to your hand in number 20, very back of the hand in, very back page, number 20, and do that question, which is the constant term. Your hand in the very back page, number 20. So here it says... One expansion 
in this term. Is that this is the answer, right? We've always looked for the answers. They gave us the answer this time. This is in the notes. This is x. This is y. This is n. What am I missing? K. But the answer will give me information to get K. All right. So we're going to go T box plus one equals N, which is 10. C box X to the 10 minus box. And then Y, which is A to the box. I need it to be 3,281,250x to the 4. Does any of that give me a hint as to what k needs to be? Remember the variable with the exponent is the hint here. So I need an x to the 4. Right? I have an x to the 10 minus something. But I need this to result in x to the 4. So the box has to be a 6, which means that box has to be a 6, that box has to be a 6, that box has to be a 6. So I technically have term 7 equals... Two hundred and ten X to the four A to the six. And they want me to tell them what A is. Well, there's a step here. I know what term seven is, don't I? What is term seven? They gave me the answer, didn't they? So when I'm solving for a missing A in my binomial, I set my term 7, I take it out, I throw it away, and I replace it with the actual answer. So I get 3,281,250 x to the 4 equals 210 x to the 4 a to the 6. There's an x to the 4 on both sides, so they'll just cancel off because when you divide by x to the 4, they go away. So now I have 3,281,250 equals 210 a to the 6. What do I have to do to get a by itself? Divide by 210. And I get 15,625. Now if it was A squared, I would do what? Square root. If it was A cubed, I would? So can I six root something? Yeah. I absolutely can. I can take the sixth root of this. So how do you do that? You go six, and then math, and you pick the one with the x, number five. That's five. Remember how I told you to do 20? You can now do 21. And 22 for that matter. And the written response.
that's your homework. It's not long.